We have in Mitt Romney, uh, a candidate who has decided in this amazing year of division, uh, where we're finally starting to get a real sense of uh, this class challenge that we have in this country. So much of our wealth being spread upward to a tiny portion of people taken from the great mass of Americans. And he says he is brave enough, courageous enough in 2012 to run as Mitt Romney, the candidate of the one-tenth of the one percent. <laughs> and people keep saying to me on television, they say, why isn't Mitt Romney doing better? You know, why are people just rushing to back this man for president? And I'm thinking to myself, you know, when, when you go to NASCAR, right, as he did yesterday, and you say to the folks at NASCAR, well, you know, they ask him the interview, are you a fan of NASCAR? Do you like the race cars? And he goes, well, I can't say I'm the biggest fan, but I know a number of people who own NASCAR teams. <laughs> Tell me, how is that not a winning message for America? I'm not, I'm not with the folks who put the gas in the car. I'm not with the folks who put the wheels on. I'm not with the folks who do any of the work. I'm not with the folks who build the cars. Heck, I wanted to shut their industry down. But I know the people that put the stickers on the cars for the big corporations. That's Mitt Romney. And you think, well, there's got to be an alternative. And in fact, there is. Yeah, you know, I think it is in this year. You know, it's, it's a funny thing in 2012. 2012, because you know there's a lot of twos in it, but it's very hard to mess that up, right? I mean, that's 2012, 2002, 2001. 21, you know, he makes those numbers up. But somehow Rick Santorum <laughs> mixed it up to think it's 1022 or something like that. 1022. You know, because he is running, and, and somebody asked me the other day, said, said, are you trying to impose your will on the American people? He said, no, no, I would never do that. And, and who would have thought that? By saying to women in the year 2012, you can't use contraception. This is, this is a guy, this is, so you have it in, you have it in Rick Santorum, a candidate who is suggesting that the founders got a lot of things right. He says he reveres the Constitution. They only got one thing right, that, or one thing wrong, that wall of separation between church and state. And here is, here is Rick Santorum coming to knock it down. And in Michigan, and Rick Santorum, he, he hasn't come down here to Arizona quite enough, but up in Michigan, he's got a call going out to all the folks today. The call is saying Democrats should cross over and vote for Rick Santorum, just to mess with Mitt Romney. He actually say this ad is paid for by hardworking Democrats who support Rick Santorum. Well, first off, I'd like to meet that. <laughs> but, but secondly, here's a strategic tip for Rick Santorum. On the day that you are putting a, a call on the phones saying that you want hardworking Democrats, working class folks, a lot of them from Catholic backgrounds, a lot of them from you know real blue collar backgrounds, you might not want to say in that same period of time that the mention of John Kennedy's name makes you want to puke, yeah. as Rick Santorum did yesterday. So you just keep working yourself through these candidates and you finally end up, you know, you say, well, Newt Gingrich must have something to offer us. <laughs> and you say that, you know, Mitt Romney is running with the goal of, of raising the standard of living for the one, 10 to 1 percent. Rick Santorum is running to make us a theocracy. And Newt Gingrich is running to find his fourth wife. <laughs> Tour in the country. <laughs> so we're left with our friend Ron Paul, and I went up to Winslow, Arizona yesterday. Up in Winslow, couldn't. I, I was. I said, I'm looking to try to find some evidence of this presidential campaign in Arizona. They're all obsessed with Michigan. They're not really spending a lot of time in Arizona. But as we pulled into Winslow, I saw an abandoned gas station with a for sale sign on one side and on the door of the gas station, someone had painted Ron Paul for president. And I thought to myself, eh, you know, I don't know how excited I am about Ron Paul, but I did like the fact that they put what he said, especially like Patel, the only one who wins a giant peace symbol next to his name. And I thought to myself, you know, 
at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you've got a Republican field that's reduced to Romney, Santorum, Newt Gingrich, and the best thing you can say about him is he's got a peace symbol in Winslow. Uh, it is probably time for us. It is probably time for us to be talking about something other than the Republican primary. And yeah. the Republican